Are you tired of expensive and limited email marketing tools? Look no further than ListMonk. ListMonk is a free, self-hosted email marketing platform that gives you complete control over your email campaigns. Concretely, what it means is that you will pay the same whatever the number of subscribers you have or transactional emails you send. In this video, we will take a deep dive into ListMonk's features from creating and managing subscriber lists to designing beautiful email templates and everything in between. To install it, you can self-host it on your server by following the procedure on the documentation or using hosting providers like LSTO to take care of the installation, updates and backup for you. Let's start by setting up our instance of ListMonk on LSTO. Hit login, then deploy my first service, search for ListMonk, hit select, Select your cloud provider, your region and your service plan. Hit next. Select your level of support and then create service. We will receive an email as soon as our instance is deployed and ready to use. I just received an email telling me that my instance is ready. So I click on click here to get the password. Then I copy the password into my clipboard and I go to my ListMonk instance. I hit login, this is my email from LSTO and the password is in my clipboard, sign in. And here is the dashboard when we arrive, we have some analytics, the number of lists, subscriber, campaigns, the message sent and some graphs but it's empty because we didn't do anything yet. As we want to send emails, the first thing we want to do is to configure our server. Go to settings and we will set up the default email that will send messages. So I will use Wasim and this email. Okay, I save it and then we go to SMTP to be able to configure our email sending. For this video, I will show you using AWS SES, but I recommend you to use MailU, a service available on our platform, but it requires a domain name that I wouldn't configure for this tutorial. My username and my password. Switch to login method and a test email. Test message sent, so let's check if we have it and I received this email from ListMong, so I know I'm able now to send email using it. So now before jumping into the builder, I will add a user into the subscriber list. So all subscribers, so we have two example users, but I need to add myself to be able to send test emails. So I add my email and I add myself to both of lists, but we will look at it later. And now let's jump into the campaigns. So a campaign is a mail that you will send to a lot of people at once and you will have analytics about it. But there is something else which are located in the templates where you have uh, all the kind of email that you can send. You have the campaign template that are already existing with the ListMonk instance, but you also have transactional email that you will trigger the sending using the, the API. But we will talk more about transactional later. So let's go to our campaign and edit it. So we can edit the name. So it's just for you in ListMonk. The subject, this is what users will see. The from address. So I can use it. mine again. Then you can assign the lists of subscribers that you have that will receive those emails. So you can uh, sort and categorize your subscribers into different lists. I will keep only default list. And then you can select a template. This will be like a foundation, the design of your email that you will use, but you will be able to customize what's inside. But this is really the foundation. You can also add tags and decide to not send it yet, but to send it later and define when 
you do it. So let's go to the content. You have different options to create your email. So either you use rich text, which is by default for this one, or you can use raw HTML, which can be useful. For example, you use a MailChimp and you will copy paste the HTML, so it can be useful. You can write markdown or just plain text for making your email look like they're written by human, but in fact, it is written inside this monk and the, these are prepared emails. Let's have a look at that email. Um, by default, it's a rich text. You have a title, a heading, links, uh, text. It's quite basic, but you can see that, that there are those variables. And those variables, you can see it in ListMonk documentation at the templating section. Go to template expressions, and there are many ways to make dynamic emails. So the information you can use, like the email, the name, first name, last name, but also some attributes that you will add, maybe using the API from your product. And you can also use useful functions like the date, or track link. So when you define a link to a page, you can use track link and automatically it will be able to know that the user reading that email clicked on the links. You also need to add the track view if you want to be able to know how many people opened the email. This is something you can get rid of if you want to respect the privacy of uh, your users. Also the unsubscribe URL and you can add them either in uh, single emails on in your template and you don't have to write it every time. If I do preview, I can see what my email looks like. So this is not what I have here, but it's because I'm using the default campaign template that I have this design. We will see later what are the templates. Okay, so let's hit start campaign. And first, because I added myself manually into the list, I received a confirmed subscription to uh, my list monk. And also I received a second email, which is the campaign. Let's try to click on the tracked link and see if we have it in the stats. Now, if we refresh the campaigns, we can see that we have two views, one click. Let's go to analytics. And of course, because it's only one person and one view, it's not very interesting. But when you have hundreds or thousands of subscribers, it's way more interesting. So let's have a look at the templates. So the one that we used was default campaign template. You can create your email the way you want to have the design you want. Just don't forget to, to add the unsubscription link and the track view to be able to have the analytics. Also the view in browser, so it will launch a page where you have the full email and you can preview it to see how it rendered with a fake email. So this is the green border that we had for our email. For the template, you also have the transactional one. So these are emails that you write entirely using HTML and with the API, you will be able to call it and the template will be sent. Unfortunately, you won't be able to have analytics using transactional emails, but you still have the unsubscribe link and it's still useful because you have the builder to make it. To send a transactional email, you use the API. So you pass the parameter, you have all the list inside the documentation and it's one email per, per subscriber. Let's have a look at the lists. You can define your users into different lists. You can name it, define if they are public or pri private. If you have existing lists into another tool, you can do import subscribers and import everyone. If ever you have some subscribers that tells you they don't want anymore to receive email and that you are not only using ListMonk, but maybe you have your settings on your platform, you can go to edit and block list the user. So the person won't receive it anymore. 
Another interesting way to add user into a URL list is to use the form so you can have a public subscription page and you just put that link somewhere in your app on or your website and you will have people added to your list monk lists. To define if it's available, it's in the settings with many other options. So enable public subscription page, enable public mailing list archive and send opt-in confirmation. So this is the mail I received, but you could say, no, I don't want to send those emails, but be careful with GPDR. By default, ListMonk is in English, but you can have other language available. You can define the performance. So it's not only about performance, but it's also about a uh, threshold and maximum email that you will be allowed to send based on your SMTP server. So be careful when you use it to not send too, too big batch size while you could just send it small batch by small batch. There are many options to uh, set up the privacy. You can add a CAPTCHA on the subscription form. You can define the options for the media that you will upload using the campaign builder. We already seen the SMTP configuration. You can automatically block users that will receive bounce. So you will have a better reputation with your SMTP server. And finally, you can also edit the appearance of the ListMonk dashboard. So adding custom CSS or JavaScript to make it a better experience or if you have specific requirements. Thank you for watching. We hope you like what you discovered from ListMonk and will use it on your projects. To not miss our coming videos about free open source software, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Looking for another great tool that your projects could benefit from? Watch this video here.